today i am going to teach you about knowledge organizations so after i finish my module you will be able to understand what organizational communication is all about you will also learn the meaning of knowledge organizations the various steps that are involved the importance of knowledge organizations and also knowledge management capabilities So let us start with what a knowledge organization is all about. A knowledge organization is a management idea describing an organization in which people use systems and processes to generate, transform, manage, use and to transfer knowledge based products and services to achieve organizational goals. From functional perspective in a knowledge organization content that is the objects data information knowledge and wisdom are generated by knowledge workers content is captured organized and preserved to enable its reuse and leveraging by people and groups other than those who have actually generated it infrastructure is in place to enable sharing of content across all elements of an organization and with external partners as appropriate procedures are in place to integrate content from multiple sources and mobilize it to achieve organizational goals and objectives a learning culture promotes not only individual learning but also results in a shared understanding finally the organization embraces continuous evolutionary change to sustain itself in a constantly changing environment simard et al in 2007 described five functions of a knowledge service organization number one function is to generate content function number two is about transforming content into useful products and services three preserve and manage content to enable organizational use and external transfer number four is to use content to achieve organizational goals and five is to transfer content externally in the form of products and services functions number 1 3 and 5 are very essential and they cannot be bypassed in any circumstance a knowledge organization also links the past present and future by capturing and preserving knowledge in the past sharing and mobilizing knowledge today and knowledge organizations can be viewed from a number of perspectives their general nature networks behavior human dimensions communications intelligence functions and services in the 1970s peter drucker may have been the first to describe knowledge workers and knowledge work knowledge is created and used by people strassman in 1985 described the transformation of work in the electronic age from the standpoint of education and training for managers and employees as well human aspects of the working environment and issues of morale motivation privacy and displacements in 1990 charles m savage observed that the nature of an organization based on knowledge rather than industrial society notions of land labor or capital was not very well understood at that time meggy and prusak in 1993 noted that core competencies are not what an organization owns but rather what it knows bartlett in 1999 indicated that empowerment is not possible in an autocratic organization that networks cannot be sustained in a fixed hierarchical structure and that learning is not possible in an environment which is constrained by rigid policies and procedures devonport in 1997 used an information ecology approach in which he explored 
the use and abuse of information in the context of infighting, resource hoarding and political battles as well as appropriate management in such a context. Simmered in 2000 states that knowledge is inextricably linked to organizational mandates. Some providers strive for objectivity while others selectively disseminate information and knowledge. There may still be others who use information to further their agenda. Users must understand that information is not innocent and that all information is not created equal. An organization consists of numerous teams which handle the different functions in the organization. In the process of working for the organization, they need to be updated about the latest happenings in the market. They also need to be aware of the alterations in the functioning of the organization. For this to occur, the knowledge which is derived from various sources needs to be accumulated and organized so that appropriate information reaches appropriate people who may actually need it. Knowledge organizations actually refer to the process of organizing all the information of the institution and allocating it at the right places so that the employees become effective workers and work faster and better. It is important for keeping essential information within the organization. There's a very old saying which says that a picture paints a thousand words is very much applicable in this case. A good model can integrate various elements and show relationships in a way that is much harder to do in writing. But first, what are the components of a knowledge management framework? So this is what we need to understand. At the most basic level, knowledge management consists of the following steps. Number one, identification of needs. Number two, identification of knowledge resources. Three, acquisition, creation or elimination of knowledge related resources or processes or environments. Four, retrieval, application and sharing of knowledge. And five, storage of knowledge. It is important to note that none of these processes are independent and all of them are affected by countless factors. That is why knowledge management frameworks are typically very different and can be presented in a wide variety of ways. For instance, some models are sequential and seek to provide a better overview at the expense of realism. Other models display overlapping processes in an attempt to simulate what actually occurs within an organization. The problem with the latter is that they are often hard to grasp and can only convey very limited information so as not to become incomprehensible. What I am going to talk about later will provide you examples of both type of organization. Since knowledge management is closely related or dependent on other disciplines such as strategy, information management, project management, etc. And it is enabled by a wide range of processes and systems, a model can become very complex indeed. This is why there is no such thing as an integrated and fully detailed knowledge management framework. That is one that captures all relevant aspects with appropriate detail. Each model must choose its focus and origin as well as its limitations. There are essentially three questions that a knowledge management framework may choose to answer. Number one, what or how? Two, why? And third, when? What, how refers to the actual processes of knowledge management. 
why refers to an indication of the reasons behind using one method or the other and when refers to the timing for using one method or another and is very closely related to why. The latter two questions are usually tackled in more strategic oriented models that take a broader perspective. What and how is usually dealt with in process oriented models that focus on an understanding of the tools available to the manager. These kind of models are generally more common particularly since the role of knowledge management can be defined far more narrowly than actually I can describe to you. Let's talk about security as a concern. The information which is circulated among the employees may be leaked by a few of them. Therefore, knowledge organization should also involve keeping a check on the internet usage and emails of the workers. Cameras are also installed in the organizations and the telephone records are maintained. However, this concern can also be dealt with by involving the employees in the security policies because it allows them to have a hold on how their personal information is actually being used by the organization. Moving on to the perspectives of knowledge organization. The first perspective is the business perspective. The strategies, services and investments made should be knowledge based. The second perspective is the management perspective. The practices and activities for directing and organizing the personnel should be knowledge based. And thirdly, the hands on operational perspective. The tasks for increasing the expertise of the employees should be knowledge based. I am going to talk about the knowledge management capabilities now. The organization can succeed by providing new information to their employees and in turn providing them with an edge in the market. The new resources are created through combination and exchange which requires social capital. Social capital is derived through the contacts created by the organization in the form of actual or potential resources. In order to understand organizational capabilities, infrastructure and process perspectives are considered. Now what are the infrastructure capabilities? The first one of course is technology. It involves the structures needed for social capital. Number one, business intelligence, which is the knowledge regarding the competition that is there in the market. Number two is collaboration and distributed learning. Collaboration and interaction between the different parts of the organization come under this. Thirdly is the knowledge discovery. Discovering new knowledge within and outside the firm. Fourthly is knowledge mapping. Tracking the sources of information and creating a database. Opportunity generation. Knowledge about the potential customers and dealers. Security. Ensuring that the information does not leak out. Moving on to the structure. The organizational structure should be flexible enough so that the flow of information is both effective and efficient. Next point is culture. Interaction between employees should be encouraged so that a collectivistic culture is created. This ensures a tacit knowledge is also transferred. Moving on to process capabilities. Here we are going to talk about acquisition process first. This involves acquiring, seeking, generating and collaborating the information from different sources. The collaboration of information may be between the individuals or it may be between the organization and its partners. Second process is the conversion process. This involves converting the existing knowledge in such a way that it is beneficial for the organization. It can be done 
through the organization's ability to organize, integrate, combine, structure or coordinate and distribute knowledge. Third process is application process. This process involves applying the knowledge which is attained. It may be through storage, retrieval, application, contribution and sharing. And finally, we talk about the protection process. This involves ensuring that the confidential information of the organization stays within the organization. For an organization to work efficiently, it is important to secure the information. Now I'm going to talk about knowledge management, infrastructure and process element. Technological knowledge organization infrastructure. How knowledge is structured and it flows uh, throughout the organization. Structural knowledge management infrastructure. The organization structure should also be very flexible. Also, incentives should be given to the employees so that the information is not leaked out. The next is the cultural knowledge management infrastructure. Different perspectives are shared among the individuals. This environment of sharing information should always be encouraged. Acquisition oriented processes. It involves acquiring completely new information or creating new information out of the existing information. Conversion oriented processes. It involves organizing and structuring knowledge in such a way that the new information can be deduced from the existing information. Application oriented processes involve the usage of knowledge by properly storing the information in the database and creating a way of effective retrieval and sharing the knowledge is appropriately applied. Security oriented process. It involves saving the information and keeping it limited to the organization. This is extremely important because the organizational knowledge gives us an edge in the market. Now let's move on to the knowledge management technologies. Knowledge management technology can be divided into the following categories that I'm going to talk about. Number one is groupware. Groupware refers to technologies that facilitate collaboration and sharing of organizational information. One of the earliest very successful products in this category was Lotus Notes. Notes provided tools for threaded discussions, sharing of documents, organization-wide uniform email, etc. Number two is workflow. Workflow tools allow the representation of processes associated with the creation, use and maintenance of organizational knowledge. For example, the process to create and utilize forms and documents within an organization. For example, a workflow system can do things such as send notifications to appropriate supervisors when a new document has been produced and is waiting their approval. Next is content or document management. Content or document management systems are systems designed to automate the process of creating web content and or documents within an organization. The various roles required such as editors, graphic designers, writers and producers can be explicitly modeled along with the various tasks in the process and validation criteria for moving one step to another. All this information can be used to automate and control the process. Commercial vendors of these tools started to start either as tools to primarily support documents, that is documentum, or as tools designed to support web content, for example, interwoven. But as the internet grew, these functions merged and most vendors now perform both functions, management of web content and of documents. 
as internet standards become adopted within most organizations, intranets and extranets, the distinction between the two essentially went away. Next is enterprise portals. Enterprise portals are websites that aggregate information across the entire organization or for groups within the organization such as the project teams. E-learning. E-learning technology enables organizations to create customized training and education software. This can include lesson plans, monitoring progress against learning goals, online classes, etc. E-learning technology enables organizations to significantly reduce the cost of training and educating their members. As with most uh, knowledge management technology in the business world, this was most useful for companies that employ knowledge workers who are the highly trained staff with areas of deep expertise such as the staff of a consulting firm. Such firms spend a significant amount on continuing education for their employees and even have their own internal full-time schools and internal educational staff. Moving on to scheduling and planning. Scheduling and planning tools automate the creation and maintenance of an organization schedule. Scheduling meetings, notifying people of a meeting, etc. An example of a well-known scheduling tool is Microsoft Outlook. The planning aspect can integrate with project management tools such as the Microsoft Project. Some of the earliest successful users of knowledge management technology in the business world were the development of these types of tools. For example, online versions of corporate yellow pages with listing of contact information and relevant uh, knowledge and work history. Telepresence. Telepresence technology enables individuals to have virtual meetings rather than having to be in the same place. Video conferencing is the most obvious example of this. These categories are neither rigidly defined nor are they exhaustive. Workflow, for example, is a significant aspect of a content or document management system and most content and document management systems have tools for developing enterprise portals. Let's talk about a case study of Walmart Inc. Walmart is an American multinational company which has departmental stores in various countries of the world. Knowledge management is an important aspect of the Walmart stores. It focuses on cutting the costs and increasing the value of its stores for the stakeholders. They coordinate the employee-related processes by combining the skilled workforce with its existing workforce. It not only focuses on the current plans, but also on the future plans of the organization. They are effective conflict resolution and negotiation policies. The employee turnover is also low through annual rewards and employee motivation programs. The projects are monitored on a very regular basis and it is ensured that the objectives of the programs are well defined. Therefore, Walmart Inc. is a very good example of the importance of knowledge management in an organization. Let us sum it up. Firstly, what is knowledge management? It is the process of capturing, developing, sharing and effectively using organizational knowledge. It refers to a multidisciplined approach to achieving organizational objectives by making the best use of knowledge. An established discipline since 1991, knowledge management includes courses taught in the field of business administration, information systems, management and library and information sciences. More recently, other fields have started contributing to knowledge management research including information and media, computer science, public health and public policies. 
Several universities are now offering dedicated Masters of Science degrees in knowledge management itself. Many large organizations, public institutions and non-profit organizations have resources dedicated to internal knowledge management efforts often as a part of their business strategy, information technology or human resource management departments. Several consulting companies provide strategy and advice regarding knowledge management to these organizations. Knowledge management efforts typically focus on organizational objectives such as improved performance, competitive advantage, innovation, the sharing of lessons learned, integration and continuous improvement to the organization. Knowledge management efforts overlap with organizational learning and may be distinguished from that by a greater focus on the management of knowledge as a strategic asset and a focus on encouraging the sharing of knowledge. It is an enabler of organizational learning. Knowledge management and organization involves organizing knowledge in such a way that it reaches the different levels of management across the organization. It ensures that the whole organization has the required information in the available database. It reflects the organization's capabilities. It can be in terms of its infrastructure or processes within the organization. Securing the organization information is a very important aspect of knowledge management.